Jeremiah chapter 27. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Jos Jos Josiah, king of Judah, came the word of Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Again, we're getting the dates. 628 BC. It's been 11 years. 2 Kings 23, 32. Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds, lock yourself up to it, and yokes, and put them upon thy neck. Now, God has some of his prophets do some weird things. Get yourself an animal yoke and put it around you and lock it up. Yokes go back as far as farming. And you wonder if Adam or even Cain had yokes. It's the working in the ground. It's putting an animal to, ser to serve it to you for plowing, for crops. It's an animal put into it. It can't do what it wants to do. It can only do what its master has taught him to do and will have him to do. And send them to the king of Edom, the king of Moab, and to the king of the Amorites, and to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, by the hand of the messengers which come to Jerusalem unto Zedekiah, king of Judah. So this is affecting nations around Jerusalem and Judah. And command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, someone in charge, I have made the earth, not evolution, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, we didn't come from beasts. God made the beast and the man. They're different. By my great power and by my outstretched arm, God made all these. And have given it unto whom it seemeth me unto me. So, President Obama has been allowed to be in the White House thanks to God. You can give God all the credit. Even though if a ruler, any ruler, submits to Satan, like Matthew 4 and Luke chapter 4, you know, if you fall down and worship me, I'll give you all these kingdoms for a moment of a time. Job chapter 1 and Job chapter 2, Satan needs God's permission. So even though if Satan puts a ruler in, God's in charge. Or God can put a ruler in, Romans chapter 11. And we're to give to the power to be. And now have I given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon. We just read. Nebuchadnezzar is going to get a vast land growth by God. My servant. And that's God speaking. And the beast of the field have I given him also to serve him. Well, he's going to give him the animals too. He's going to give it all to Nebuchadnezzar because of Judah's sin. And all nations shall serve him. And his son, evil Mur Murdoch, or Murdoch. What a name, evil Murdoch. And his son's son, Belshazzar. Unto the very time of his land come. And then many nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. So there's a time period. And what we read earlier is 70 years. They're going to serve the grand, uh, they're going to serve the son and the grandson of Nebuchadnezzar. And shall come to pass that the nations and kings which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, that and that will not put their neck under the yoke you know servitude I'm not going to do it God says you're going to do it that nation will I punish he's already told Judah listen get out of the land go to Babylon with the Babylonian army if you refuse you're going to die in the land that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with sword, war, with the famine, complete drought, and with pestilence, diseases, 
until I have consumed them by his hand. So if you don't obey the Lord, it's going to be death. Therefore hearken not ye to your prophets. Uh -oh. These are men are preaching what Jeremiah is not preaching. They're preaching peace, peace. And there is no peace, saith the Lord, unto the wicked. Nor to your, div nor to your diviner. Those are people who use, you know, divination. Nor to your dreamers. I had a dream. Everything's going to be okay. What, what, did, what did God say? Therefore, hearken not. Nor to your enchanters. They chant. Nor to your sorcerers. That's what they were doing in Egypt. That's your magic. That's your potter. That's your witchcraft. That's the little guy that wears the hat with the moon, the stars, and all the other stuff. What did God say? Therefore hearken not unto them. Don't listen to them. Which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. Because the message is, you know what? Rebel against the, the Gentile. Rebel against King Nebuchadnezzar. And God saying, I told you to go. When somebody goes against the word of God, you are not to hearken unto them. When somebody says you need to be baptized to be saved, you don't hearken to them. You're saved by works. You don't hearken to them. If you're a member of this church, you're not to hearken to them. They say anything contrary to what God has said. Jesus Christ is not God. Don't hearken to them. You know a lot of your faults, especially in America, your faults, religions, and your cults have come from dreams. People have had a dream of an angel and other kinds of things. For they prophesy a lie unto you. Nebuchadnezzar's coming. I've already seen the end of the book. As a family, we're reading Lamentations right now. We know Nebuchadnezzar came. And history documents it. So these guys are liars. To remove you far from your land. And they don't even know it. They think Nebuchadnezzar is not going to come. They think that Judah is going to win. And they have no idea. And not even knowing God says. To remove you far from the land. That's death. Because if you don't listen to what God said, you're not going to Babylon. You're only going to go to Babylon under your own power, which God told you to go. If you don't, and if you listen to these prophets, it's going to be death by sword, by famine, and by pestilence and consumption. Remove you out of the land. That's the salvation of the Jew. It's not heaven. They want a land that I should drive you out. And ye shall perish. No, ye should perish. There is still a free will chance for them to do right, turn from the, from their prophets, turn from their their wickedness, to turn from the liars and say we're going to serve God. I mean, all will die. But if you hearken unto the liars, you're, you're, you're going to die by sword, by pestilence, by famine, by consumption. Not a way to go. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that's Edom, Moab, what we already read, and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord. They shall till it, farm, and dwell therein. And you're going to find out when, when Babylon comes and they take Jeremiah out of prison, there are some people left behind by the chosen will of God, the poor people and all that, to, to stay in the land. But my jury of the, of the Jews do go to Babylon, but there are some that left behind and do not die. 
They obeyed God. God left some in the land. But you have to go under the bondage yoke of Babylon. And who wants to do that? I spank also the Zedekiah, king of Judah. This is Jeremiah. According to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon, and serve him and his people, and live. Now, between 27.1 and, and 27.12, it's been 11 years. And what Jeremiah is telling the king through God, serve the Gentile. You want to ask Jonah and Peter about that? You want to ask Daniel about that when, when they're given the Gentile food? Chapter 1 of Daniel. Why will you die? Because I want to rebel against what you said, God. Thou and the people. By the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. Because you will not listen to what God has told you to do. That's why you'll die. He says, why will ye die? He's talking to the king, verse 12, Zedekiah. Why are you going to die, Zedekiah? And thy people. The people that are under you. You're the leader of them. They're going to follow what you do. And you're going to rebel. So they're going to rebel. Has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. You got it? God wants them to repent. Repent. Get right. Get right. They won't do it. You're going to Babylon. Therefore hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you saying. And this is what the liars are saying. You shall not serve the king of Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you. So as Jeremiah is speaking the word of God to these people, there are prophets saying, Jeremiah, you're a liar. God is going to destroy this city. God is going to bless this city. God is going to throw a sinner that rejects Jesus Christ as, as his Savior into hell. God would never throw anybody into hell. God just loves the sinner. <laughs> Everything will work out in the end. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord. So there are men that prophesy, and God says, I didn't send them. And what's what he says? Yet they prophesy a lie in my name. Somebody gets up and says, Thus saith the Lord, you better find out what they're saying if it's something that God said. How do you know a cultist? He does not do what the Bible tells him to do, and he only takes one or two verses out of context. you got to study to show thyself a proof unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word. you got to know what that man is saying and what the context of it is being said to Who's it being said to? Well, there's three groups of people in the Bible. Four, really. The Jews. The Gentiles. The entire world. Or the saved people. And you can't go run as a church member, as a, as a born-again Christian, and run to take something that God said to the Jew. And the world can't run in and take something that God wrote to the church member. You'd be a liar. That I might drive you out. You listen to the lying prophets, God will drive you out. And that ye might perish, death. Ye and the prophets that prophesied unto you, they're going to get what you get, death. Also, I spake to the priests. We began that in, in last night's chapter. Remember, he's preaching outside the temple. The priests and the people are hearing. And the false prophets, and they want him dead. And the prince comes. They spare Jeremiah. Then the elders show up and start quoting the scriptures. I also spake to the priests and to all this people. 
last chapter we did, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you. And go back to the last chapter. They're standing right there. Just as much as Jesus Christ rebuked the Pharisees and the scribes, you hypocrites, you, you uh, when he rebuked them, woe unto you lawyers, as he spoke face to face with them, so is Jeremiah. He is not talking behind anybody's back, because in chapter uh, 27, he says, verse 2, stand in the court of the house. Stand in the court of the Lord's house. He's right at the 26 2. He's right at the temple. And then 26 7. So the priests and the prophets and all the people. That is the same group of people that he is preaching to right here. And he's also, Zedekiah, he, he's preaching to uh, 26 1 at the beginning of the reign of. Jehoiakim says, uh, no, wait a minute. Stand according to, no, that's wrong. There's another chapter. He, he goes to the king's gate. There's another chapter. But he's speaking to the priests and the people and about their prophets, and they're standing right there. Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon. They're already gone. Oh, we'll be back shortly. Seventy years is not short. That's what God told them. Seventy years. That's not a short time. Not many of them are going to live to see it when they do come back. Shall be brought again from Babylon. For they prophesy a lie unto you. Seventy years is not short. Hearken now unto them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Wherefore should this city be laid waste? Now, shortly, when they say shortly, they're saying next week, next month, next year. They're not speaking of 70 years. And God says, listen, don't listen to them. I have a specific time. And if you don't adhere to what Jeremiah is telling you, this city is going to be laid waste. And guess what? Go ask Nehemiah what happens. The city is laid waste. Waste. 70 years later and some time, a minimum of 70 years, the city is still in waste as Nehemiah goes walking around checking out the rubbish. But if, but if they be prophets, and if the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts. That the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord, all right, there's vessels there still. There are vessels gone. There are vessels through there. And in the house of the king of Judah, his household goods, and at Jerusalem, go not to Babylon. They're so worried about the hardwares and the softwares, then they're sold. Oh, what about the pots and pans? What about the candlesticks? What about all that? God says, okay, make intercession if you're my prophet. If you're my prophet, you will stop that stuff going to Babylon. When asked Belshazzar, when he calls for all the silver and gold cups that were in the temple of the Lord and starts having a feast to all his gods, I guess these guys weren't really prophets, according to the Bible. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, concerning the pillars, and those will be mentioned again, in 52.17, they found in 2 Kings 25.13. And concerning the sea, that's where the brazen sea that the priests washed. And concerning the bases, that's what the sea was on. We're going to read about that later. And concerning the bases and concerning the residue of the vessels that remain in this city. Cups, dishes, bowls. It's going bye-bye. Which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took not. So guess what? He's already been in the city. And there are things he left behind. We will move about that. Left behind. Pots and, I guess we weren't really the Lord's 
spoons or anything like that. We weren't really the Lord's pots because all the dishes and all the pots went away. We're still here. Oh. Left behind. Okay. When he carried away captive Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, from Jerusalem to Babylon, and all the nobles of Judah and Jerusalem, though so there was a previous visit of Babylon, of Nebuchadnezzar. He took people and he took goods. There are three times that he comes into the land. The third time he takes it off and destroys all. Yea, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah. That's what you guys are all concerned about. Notice they're worried about the junk. They're not worried about themselves. Because it's just not what you say, well, they're worried about God. The king of Judah's I mean the king of the king's house. It says the house of the, of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem. They're worried about the goods. See, that stuff has become the God. Not God. I mean I heard a preacher one time, his prayer altar, you know, unless you come down and kneel before his altar at the prayer altar, you know, God doesn't listen to you. Well, that prayer altar has become a God. Some men's ministries become a God. Some preachers become a God. Some dead churches are become a God. Anything become a God that's not God. That's idolatry. They are idolatrizing the stuff that are in the house of the Lord and not the Lord himself. And well, they have little knickknacks and stuff like that that looks like the stuff that was in the temple. Yea, thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. I mean, isn't it called silverware? Concerning the vessels that remain in the house of the Lord and in the house of the king of Judah and of Jerusalem, they shall be carried to Babylon. He's coming back. And there shall they be unto the day that I visit them. Ezra. Saith the Lord, Then will I bring them up Ezra 1 7 and 7 19 and restore them to this place which is going to be destroyed which Ezra is going to rebuild the king of the Medes and the Persians gives Ezra and Nehemiah all the stuff to bring back which never can Ezra come now that time period from, from the third time that never can Ezra come as you're coming back, it's a long period of time. Let's see if I have that here. I got time and date somewhere. Um, all right, these are the dates I've got 606 Babylon invades Jerusalem, 597. This is BC Babylon invades Jerusalem the second time, 586. Babylon final conquest against Jerusalem. Seventy years in Babylon. And I don't think if I have the date of Ezra and Nehemiah, which I don't. No, I don't. So the times of Nebuchadnezzar is 606 the first time, 597 the second time, and 586 the last and third time. And we're, we're between the second and third time right now where we stand. Nebuchadnezzar has already come. He's already carried people captive. And there's, there's a chapter is it coming up where we already read on how many people he's taken. Right, let's see. I think it's, the other night we read it as a family. So 51. Let's about 51. Fifty-one. I think fifty-one. 
All right, 52, verse 28. This is the people whom Nebuchadnezzar carried away captive. In the seventh year, 3,000 Jews and 3 and 23. 3,023 Jews disappeared from Jerusalem. In the 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar, he carried away captive from Jerusalem 830 and two persons. 832 people the second time are gone. And with the first and second time he comes, some of the goods are gone. The hardware. I mean, bowls, spoons, whatever he took. God says he's coming back. He's already been twice. He's coming back, and they're only worried about their good, their material thing. That's all they're worried about. He's already come. He's coming again. Oh, what about the stuff? Aren't we in that period of, as the church age today? Revelation chapter 4. Show you that we are in this period of time. Revelation chapter 4 about our church age. Revelation 3, excuse me. Revelation 3, verse 14. Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Didn't we just read about the creation? I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So that so then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Look that word up in the Greek. Spew. Because thou sayest, I am rich, increase with goods, and have need of nothing. Well, they have need of something. Some of their stuff is gone. And they want it back. You notice they say, oh, they said, wait a minute. Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon. That's what the, that's what the prophets are saying. Why aren't they prophesying about the people that were taken? Where are the people they're mentioning? Oh, sure it be that the people and the goods are coming back. The people shall carry the stuff back to the Lord's house. How about that prophecy? It ain't about the people. It's about the goods. And have need of nothing, knowest not that thou art wretched. That's the condition of Judah. And miserable. That is the condition of Judah. Wait till lamentation. They are beyond miserable. And poor. Wait till lamentation. And blind. They don't see what Jeremiah is saying. And naked. They're going to be naked. You know, people are more concerned for junk today than they are for their soul. They will get angry if you stand out on a public street instead of their a set of people's souls that you are ruining business. What about souls? No, I don't care about souls. I want the money. I want the goods. I gotta bypass the Bible to get into a store. You know? That ain't right. And these people in this chapter 27 are going to die violent deaths. And they don't have to. 